hey, wait, we are still in the business of making sure that you score 90 and above. So if there is any topic you feel that you needed a review, you needed me to explain more for you to understand and score 90 and above in physics, just drop it in the comment section and I'll just do a video on that. I am up here because of a student that said in a comment section that I needed a review on friction. In today's video, I'm going to do analysis in problems involving friction. So if you are joining for the first time, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications because they have a lot to gain in this channel, both practical theory analysis. With no further ado, let's get right into the video. Calculate the magnitude of the force required to just move a 20 kg object along the horizontal surface. If the coefficient of friction is 0 0.2 and we are giving g to be 10 meters per second square, we have the following options. Option A, 400.0 Newton. Option B, 40.0 Newton. Option C, 4.0 Newton. Option D, 0.4 Newton. You should know that friction is a force of opposition and it acts between two surfaces in contact. Let me use an illustration to explain what I mean. So let's go. Now looking at this diagram now, this is what? A 20 kg object. Now this is the object that is weighing 20 kg, right? Okay, now this is the horizontal surface, right? Okay, now as this body, this is the direction of the motion. As the body is moving this way, there is also a force that is acting opposite towards this direction of the motion. And that force is the frictional force. Okay, now if you remember from the law of friction, that F is equal to what? Mu what? R. Now this is the frictional force. This is the coefficient of limiting friction. This is the normal reaction. Look at the normal reaction. The normal reaction of this object is acting upwards, right? Now we all know that the weight is acting downwards. You understand? And the reaction is equal to the weight. That means the reaction is equal to the weight. Okay? And weight is equal to mass times what? Acceleration due to gravity. Is that clear? But from the question, they gave us mass to be 20 kilogram and g is constant to be 10 meters per second square, right? So for us to get our mg simply by saying this is 20 times 10 to give me 200 newton. Is that clear? And also, the coefficient of limiting friction is given by 0 0.2. Which force are we actually looking for? We are looking for the frictional what force. You can see that it is opposing the motion of this body moving in this direction okay so let's just simply apply the formula and wow our answer comes out so let's go so by using f equals to mu r what's my f that is what i'm looking for my mu is 0 0.2 multiplied by what 200 right now if you do that you're going to have what you're going to have 40 Newton is this question is quite simple and from what we have gotten so far the correct option to this question is option B If an object just begins to slide on a surface inclined at 30 degrees to the horizontal The coefficient of friction is what? Option A root 3 Option B root 3 over 2 Option C 1 over root 2 Option D 1 over root 3 now, looking at this diagram, I want to explain the concept is so you're going to get the coefficient of friction, okay? Now, look at the forces acting on an inclined plane. Now, this is a body, or let me say a body, okay? Now, for the fact that an object is inclined in a plane, these forces are going to act on them. So, listen attentively. Let me explain how they act on this object. First, this object, the reaction on this object is acting up, which is this one, right? Why the weight of this object is acting what? Down. Now, because the body is sliding, the frictional force is now acting in this direction. Now, for us to understand that particular question, you have to note so many things in this diagram. Okay? In case you see something similar to it, that is why I'm explaining it, okay? The way you understand. Now, look at this body. This is the body acting on a plane, okay? And is inclined at an angle called theta. Now, friction is a force of opposition. Ordinarily, the body will do what? Will slide down, okay? But because friction is a force of opposition, it's going to act opposite to this body. Can't you see the direction of the arrow? It's going this way, okay? This body is being acted upon by two forces. One is what? 
the vertical force and two is what the horizontal what force now look at it this force that is making this body to drag this way to go down to act towards the what the vertical is it's said to be parallel to this plane okay and when you resolve it, it becomes w sine what theta okay now the one that is acting perpendicular to this body or is said to be what w cos what theta now you must note that frictional force mu r the force that is parallel to this plane parallel which is this one is equals to w sine what theta the force that is what perpendicular to the plane is equals to w sorry cos theta right for us to obtain the coefficient of static limiting friction the angle of inclination theta is slowly what increased by this way right so the body can now do what start to slide down do we understand so in that case that means that the frictional force is equal to the what to the parallel force do you understand frictional force is acting in this direction is not equal to the parallel force on the object so we can say that f is equal to what mu r right but this frictional force is now equal to what to w sine theta because it is the force that is parallel to the plane you now say this is equals to w sine theta is equals to mu what r now this r happens to be my normal reaction look at it that's the reaction of the object on the plane and this is the weight of the object acting down right now this normal reaction is no longer equal to the weight but it is equal to the perpendicular force acting on this object so the normal reaction is equal to the perpendicular force which is what w cos theta is that clear so if you put these things in place we are going to have that my frictional force is w sine theta is equals to mu w cos theta right now if i want to make mu the subject i will now say is equals to sine theta divided by w cos theta of which this cancels this right we have mu is equals to sine theta over cos theta is that clear and sine theta over cos theta is equal to what tan theta so in a nutshell if you are given an angle in a friction problem i ask to calculate the coefficient of limiting friction just simply say tan theta that is your answer whatever value you have becomes your correct answer i hope that is clear so let's solve the question and from the question we are giving theta to be 30 what degrees okay i ask to find what mu simply by saying that mu is equal to tan what theta that's all so mu is equal to tan 30 and so this is equal to 1 over root 3 is that clear so this is the correct answer to this particular question so from what we've got so far the correct option to this question is option d a bead traveling on a straight wire is brought to rest at 0 0.2 meters by friction if the mass of the bead is 0 0.01 kilogram and the coefficient of friction between the bead and the wire is 0 0.1 it's i mean the work done by the friction and we are giving g to be 10 meters per second square option a 2 times 10 to the power of minus 4 joules option b 2 times 10 to the power of minus 3 joules option c 2 times 10 to the power of minus 1 joules option d 2 times 10 to the power of minus 2 joules so quickly let's take the parameters the question said that the bead was brought to rest at 0 0.2 meter that becomes the distance so x is equal to 0 0.2 meters right and the mass of the bead is given as 0 0.01 so the mass is given as 0 0.01 kilogram and the coefficient of friction 0 0.1 and we are giving g to be 10 meters per second square right now we're asked to find the work done how do we get the work done if you remember that work done is equals to force multiplied by distance okay but we don't even have the force but we have the parameters that we used to get our force knowing that frictional force is equals to mu what r 
what is R? Reaction. And reaction is equal to weight. And weight is equal to mg. So, my reaction is equal to weight, which is also equal to what? mg. So, let me just get the reaction. Simply by saying that this is equal to 0. Point, sorry, 0. Point, 0, 0.01, sorry. 0 0.01 okay multiply by what 10 now my r is going to give me 0 0.1 newton so i'm going to put it here with the coefficient okay to get my frictional force then i'll transfer it here with the distance to get the work done i hope that is simple okay so let's go the frictional force my frictional force what is my mu my mu is 0 0.1 multiplied by my r is 0 0.01 right so F is going to be 0, 0 0.01 Newton. Is that clear? Now simply, for us to get the work done, which is equal to force multiplied by what? Distance. I'm going to say that this is 0 0.01 multiplied by X, which is 0 0.2. It's going to give me 0 0.00 what? 2 joules, right? Now, they left the answer in standard form, which is 2 times 10 to the power of what? Minus 3 joules. Is that clear? So, we have this type of question. This is how you are going to solve it. And from what we've got so far, the correct option to this question is option B. A motorcycle of mass 100 kilograms moves around in a circle of radius 10 meters with a velocity of 5 meters per second. Find the coefficient of friction between the road and the tires. We are giving g to be 10 meters per second square. We have the following options. Option A, 25.00. Option B, 2.50. Option C, 0 0.50. Option D, 0 0.25. We are giving the mass to be 100 kilogram. We are giving the radius to 10 meters. We are giving the velocity to be 5 meters per second. We are looking for the coefficient of what? The limiting friction. So what do we do? When an object is moving around the circle, there is this inward force that is acting on that object. Okay? So that inward force is said to be what? Centripetal force. So what you are going to do is to get our centripetal force. Once you get our centripetal force, we can now use it to get our coefficient of limiting friction. So let's go. We have that centripetal force is equal to mv square over what? R. Now let's substitute. What is my mass? This is 100 multiplied by velocity is 5 times 5. Okay, let me say 5 square divided by what? 10. Right? Now, if this cancels this, I have that F is equal to 10 times what? 25, which is give which will give rise to 50 250 Newton, right? Remembering that. R is equal to what? Mg. What is my mass? 100 times G is what? 10. So R, which is the reaction force, is going to give me 1000 watt Newton, right? So remember that frictional force is equal to mu what? R. So what is the frictional force? 250. This is 250 is equal to mu multiplied by what? 1000, okay? Now, for us to get me, we are going to say this is 250 over 1000, okay? So, mu is equals to 0 0.25. I hope that is clear. Now, from what we've got so far, the correct option to this question is option D. If this video was able to help someone out there, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications to get notified each time I post videos. And lastly, do not forget to share so that other students that are preparing for this same forthcoming exam can see it and learn from there. I'll see you next time in the next one. Bye for now.